So this set of tasks asks you to integrate some of the functionality we've looked at in relation to synthesis with uh, the SF Play sampling functionality. Just to introduce the idea that you know these these techniques are transferable. So, for example, in this case, we uh, are applying an envelope to um, an oscillator. So very simply, here we have a cycle object which is outputting a sine wave constantly. Um, and then we are enveloping that using this function object which is going through a line. So function produces the string of numbers that line knows to follow this curve. And we've talked about that in previous tutorials. Um, that in turn is controlling the level via the multiplication object. Remember that the multiplication object is performing exactly the same function as this gain object uh, in terms of controlling the level of each individual sample that, in this case, cycle is outputting. Uh, and so if I, I click on the button object and we, we get an enveloped sine wave. So um, if we look at this part, what I've got is uh, an SF play object, which has the drum loop sample that we were listening to earlier being opened upon patch load. So this is quite an important part here. Notice this object load bang. This is going to be extremely useful to you for initiating parts of your patch. Load bang, as the name suggests, sends a bang as soon as the patch loads. And that means, of course, that when your patch loads, you can institute a string of events that, as I say, in initiate things in your patch. So in this case, it's going through a message that says open drum loop. If you want to load a sound as soon as the patch loads, rather than having to drag and drop a sample or go into the open dialog for SF Play, um, you can do so. You just put in open and then the name of the sample that you want to load, um, or at least the file path. Now, if it's a single name, it has to, the file that you're searching for has to be within the same directory as your patch. So my patch is task two SF play blah blah blah, um, and drum loop is in the same place. If I were to look for another sound, then I would have to put that sound within the same folder. Alternatively, for example, I could have a folder within my file directory that kind of uh, accommodates all of my sounds. And I could put maybe a couple of other sounds into there. OK, so now my uh, sounds folder here has a bunch of sounds in it. Um, and I could find those sounds using this open dialog as well. But in this case, I would need to put in the full file path, for, well, full relative file path for them. So that would be open sounds and then a slash, whoops, sounds slash uh, one underscore kick dot wav. So in this case, it's it knows that from within the directory I am currently in, it needs to find the folder sounds and then it needs to find the sample that we've got there within that. So now if I uh, close the patch um, and restarted it, then this it should find uh, or it should automatically load that sound. However, I'm not going to do that because um, we don't. That's not really the purpose of this tutorial. I'm kind of going off on a tangent. So in this case, I've loaded the drum loop sound. And notice that I've also got a bit on the end, which might have confused you a little bit. Um, it says open drum loop if comma loop one. So that comma essentially uh, separates this into two messages, one of which is the open command for that particular sound file. And the second part is to say, turn looping on. Um, so now if I, uh, if I pull up the level here um, and click on this button up here, or indeed on this uh, message box that says one, SF Play will know to start playing, but because I've turned the looping function on, it will loop. So that's fine. Now what I haven't done is uh, to provide a means of turning this off, so I'll just uh, turn this down for the time being. 
Right, so um, how might we then go about enveloping this sound in the same way as we've enveloped this one over here? Um, well, basically we need to decide which parts of that patch to or that uh, engine to copy across. Um, and I've kind of given you a few clues here. It says you need to insert the elements here. Um, and I, I guess we could think about this in terms of what constitutes the sound making portion of this engine and what constitutes the enveloping portion. So I kind of identified that before. This is the sound producing portion, which is the cycle object. And then this is the envelope portion. It encompasses this uh, multiplication object, the line object, and the envelope. So I'm going to copy all of those across. Like that. Um, I delete that. Run that through there. And we have our envelope in portion. The only thing I would probably then want to do is to have them both trigger at the same time. So I will use a single button object for that and connect it to uh, both the uh, command to, to tell SF play to play and the um, the enveloping function. Uh, so now if I turn this up, the lock and patch. When I hit this button, we have both the envelope being triggered and SF play being triggered, um, and we get the envelope applied to the sound as we hoped. A couple of things we could do in addition to this. Um, I'm going to unlock the patch and get rid of these comments because we don't need them anymore. First of all, we might want to change the envelope length. So we can do that by sending a set domain message with a $1 symbol um, along with a, a number box. So here we're saying set domain and then replace the $1 symbol with whatever value we've got up here. Um, so if I make that a thousand milliseconds long, then that makes the sound as long as it is at the moment because the function object is always set by default to 1000 milliseconds. Um, but I could also make it a great deal shorter. Notice we only get the drum sound in this because the envelope cuts off before we hear any more of the, the rhythm. Um, or I could uh, make it say uh, five seconds long. in which case we get a, a, a considerable blurring of the opening attack because the um, attack portion of the envelope is, relatively speaking, quite slow. It takes 329 milliseconds to ramp up. So we lose the crispness of the first beat. Um, one more thing. Uh, let's, let's bring that down to a thousand again. Um, if we have a look at the right-hand outlet of the line object, you will see that it says bang when line reaches destination. And we can do, uh, well, we can see that happening. Okay, so as soon as it got to the end of the envelope, it flashed. And we could, of course, do something with that. We could get that to, um, we could, you know, when the envelope completes, we could tell it to perform some other operation. Um, the most obvious, perhaps, being to get it to perform that envelope again. So we can simply do a kind of we can loop that action. So now when we change the length of this, then obviously the loop gets more frenetic. The one problem we have with that, of course, is that we cannot shut it up. Um, so something we might want to add then is um, a gate object. So we can either let that message through or not. So I'm going to move that cable to the gate object there and that into the button object and provide a, uh, we don't need that anymore, uh, provide a toggle to turn the gate on and off. So a lot of patch again. And now we're allowing the signal through for the loop, but when I want it to stop, we can turn the toggle off. One more thing, perhaps we would want to have the toggle object here actually initiate the envelope, but maybe we'd actually want to use it as an on-off control for the whole sound and its loop. So to do that, 
I'm going to use a select object and I'm going to put one. Why am I doing that? Because what we're looking for is to recognize when the uh, toggle is initiated and when it is it will send a one. Uh, it'll send a one to gate first of all which opens the gate and allows it to loop but it will also send it to the select object which sends a bang when it recognizes a, an on message as it were um, send that to the button object and uh, will trigger both SF play and the envelope. Um, whereas when I switch it off, uh, while the gate object closes, the select object doesn't recognize the number because it's a zero um, and so doesn't send a message to tell um, either the envelope to start or the sound file. So now it's operating as an on off switch for all of that. So that's enveloping uh, either a sign tone or a, an SF play object. So let's move over a little bit.